This is the first of our problems of the week. I will hopefully be picking one of the more challenging problems that we're going to be covering during the week and going through a video solution of it. I was asked to do this in the last class and I'm going to be trying to do that each week for this class. We're going to be looking at the expanding railroad rail. The title of the talk is Railroad Rail, a problem on computation. So on the left here we have a picture of the railroad rail problem. On the top in the curved area that is the curved railroad rail. It has a length of a plus epsilon. For us a is 5,280 feet and epsilon is equal to 1. The straight line that is the cord underneath that arc is 5,280 feet and d, the amount that it's bowed up from the surface, that's the quantity that we're trying to get and d is right there in the upper part. Okay, we have a radius here and the radius is drawn pretty close to scale here. If anything, the radius is a little smaller than the true radius is. We define the angle theta over 2 to be half of the angle for the full arc that is subtended here over the full stretch of the railroad. And of course, since r is the radius and d is the amount of the bulge, r minus d is the distance from the center to the flat line before the railroad was bulged. Okay, so those are all the quantities in the graph. I hope you have no problem understanding and following everything in the graph. Now we have to figure out what do we know and what can we calculate. Okay. The challenge that we're going to find is not in the geometry or the trigonometry or anything like that. It's that because r is very big and because epsilon is small, Many of the quantities that we're going to deal with are going to be of the form 1 plus delta, where delta is a small number, and this can make computation difficult because we can lose precision in digits as we do our calculations. All right, so let's work through our geometry. Our goal is to determine d, and from the figure it's pretty clear that the leg of the right triangle, r minus d, the right triangle is legs r, r minus d, and a over 2, I can write that distance r minus d as equal to r cosine theta over 2. And then I just solve for d. d is equal to r times 1 minus cosine theta over 2. Pretty simple. We've found what d is. All we need to do is determine both r and theta, which have not been determined for us, but those are going to be functions of epsilon and a. So let's focus on two other quantities we can determine. The arc length, the length of the piece of the circle that's subtended by that chord, that's just equal to the radius times the angle that subtends that arc as if that angle is written in radians. So we have the length a plus epsilon is equal to r times theta. The second equation we're going to look at is we're going to rewrite the length, the other leg of the triangle, a over 2, we're going to rewrite that in terms of its trigonometry, and that's just equal to r sine theta over 2. Okay, so I have now these two equations. a and epsilon are known. r and theta are unknown. So I have two equations and two unknowns. I should be able to solve for r and theta. So our first step is to look at the first equation. We're going to solve that for r. So r is going to equal a plus epsilon divided by theta. We're going to substitute that into the second equation. And then we're going to rearrange it a little bit. So the first step we're going to find is it can be rewritten as a times theta over 2 is equal to a plus epsilon times sine theta over 2. And then I'm going to rearrange it by dividing by a theta over 2 and dividing by the a plus epsilon to get sine theta over 2 divided by theta over 2 equals a over a plus epsilon. Now remember, a is 5,280, a plus epsilon is 5,281, so a over a plus epsilon is a number that is very slightly less than 1. And I'm trying to now solve, effectively, sine x over x equals some number that is slightly less than 1. Now you can try and go do that on a calculator by iterating the equations. You can go to a site like Wolfram Alpha and do a nonlinear equation solver. If you know how to use MATLAB or you know Python or you know Mathematica, you can go ahead and use a root finder to solve that equation. Instead, what I'm going to do, because that is a small quantity, is I'm going to use the Taylor series expansion. 
So if I use the Taylor series expansion for x and sine x and divide it by x, I get the expression 1 minus x squared over 6. And I'm not going to include any higher order terms. It's going to turn out we don't really need them. And I can write a over a plus epsilon as 1 minus epsilon over a plus epsilon. So if I equate these two, so sine x over x, I'm going to replace x by theta over 2. And I equate that to a over a plus epsilon written as 1 minus epsilon over a plus epsilon. You see I can cancel the 1 from both of those equations. And then I'm just left with small things. I can solve it. I get theta squared over 24 is equal to epsilon over a plus epsilon. Or I can write theta is 20, the square root of 24 epsilon over a plus epsilon. All right, great. Let's move forward now. We've determined theta. All I have to do now is plug in those numbers and determine explicitly what theta is. Theta turns out to be 24 over 5,281. If I take the square root of that, I get 0 0.067413. Great. Now I'm ready to determine r. Remember, r was a plus epsilon over theta. Plugging in those numbers, I get 78,337. Okay. It is about 40 times bigger than a over 2 or the radius is 40 times bigger than that uh, full arc length. You can see that this picture is really not drawn to scale. This angle theta is a very small angle, much, much smaller than the way it's drawn here. Okay, let's move on. Finally, we have our formula for D. Now, theta is small, and cosine theta, when theta is small, is close to 1. So once again, we want to cancel that 1 by using a Taylor series expansion for cosine. That Taylor series expansion is 1 minus theta squared over 8 for cosine theta over 2. The 1's cancel. I'm left with r theta squared over 8. I can plug that into the equation. And plugging in the numbers, I get the square root of 15,343 divided by 8. And it's 44.501. That is a really large amount. The bow is almost 50 feet. If you guessed 10 feet on your prediction, you did really well. Note that because we use the Taylor series expansion, I didn't have to evaluate any trig functions. I didn't have to solve any complicated equations. I just had to take square roots, and then the rest of it was arithmetic. And this was all made possible because I recognized that since we have these small quantities, I can use the Taylor series expansion and truncate that expansion at the lowest order that is needed in order to be able to solve the problem. As I mentioned before, this problem is a lot harder if you do not use the Taylor series, and it's much easier to make a mistake if you don't use the Taylor series. So I hope that this discussion that has gone over the railroad rail problem is one that you have found helpful. And I hope it will also allow you to reduce any fears that you have about using Taylor series. They can really become, come in very handy in a number of different problems that you may have to evaluate in the future.